Okay, now we're going to put some STP on the piston and the rings. Make sure you get them on here, all the way around here. And the purpose of putting this stuff on here, so when your engine first starts, before the oil starts circulating in the engine, it'll have some lubrication. That way it won't try to seize when you first start it. Just put some all the way around here even. Put a little bit on the skirt of the piston. My own camera. Uh, okay, you want to hold your piston like this. Start tightening your spring compressor up. Like Get it real good and tight. Okay, now let's drop it in the cylinder. Get ready to catch it down here. Start the piston like this. Take your rubber hammer. The handle. Okay, we got the piston back in here. If you look, we got to line up the connecting rod here. It's lined up on the crank journal here. Spin the crank around. Get ready to hook it up here. Okay, after you get the connecting rod lined up on the crank journal, be sure to put all kinds of STP on the crank journal. Also, on your end cap, before you put it in here, put some on it. Okay. Now, what I'm going to do off camera, I'm going to put this on here and go ahead and get the bolt started. Then, we'll torque them. Okay, now we'll get ready to torque the connecting rod. And since both of these bolts are the same length, you torque them to 185 inch pounds. Get it on there, make sure you got it real good. Hold the block solid. But there it was. They don't it don't seem as tight as you think it should be, but it's tight enough. Now I'm gonna get the other one. It's uh it's harder to get the top one, I mean the bottom one, because your uh, clearances are pretty tight in there. Especially with the big half inch torque wrench or three eighths torque wrench like this. Okay, same for this one. Lighten up till it clicks. Now, I'd recommend pulling it back down, and double checking the top one. Okay, it clicks. Okay, now they're torqued. Now, on some of them, particularly the older ones, they have a metal tab that runs underneath these bolts. It's got a little piece of metal you bend over that prevents the bolts from working loose. When they're newer engines, they don't do that. I was planning, like I mentioned earlier, I was planning on finding one, but I can't find one, so we'll just take a chance with it. Okay, now we've got that torqued and everything. I'm going to put the valve tappets in. I put STP on them. Here's the other one. The STP also helps hold them in place for you, too. Uh, okay, now... Here's the camshaft. I done put plenty of STP on there. I also put some back in the cam bearing here. Now if you look, in the crankshaft timing gear, a little tiny circle on this one tooth. And you look on the camshaft, you see a little thing right here. A little sort of hole. And you drop your camshaft in the bearing. Drop it in right there. You're supposed to line up. That's how you know your engine's in time. Okay, now that's taken care of. We're going to get ready to put the crankcase cover on. Okay, for this next part, we're going to want to turn the engine on the side at a slight angle. You're going to put your oil slinger on here. Put it in the camshaft here. Alright, guys, before we put the crankcase cover on, I want to replace this oil seal because they come in the kit and this is on the part that's on the bottom of the engine. There's several different ways you can do it. This is the way I'm going to do it. Get a screwdriver up underneath here. Pry it up on it. And it popped up and hit me in the head. Okay, we're getting ready to put the new one in. Just set it on here like this. Make sure it's about even all the way around. And get you a big socket. This is a 
inch and a quarter. Put it on there even, like that. Get your rubber mallet. Move the camera just a little bit. Sorry for the noise. Make sure it goes in even all the way around. Turn it around here. Actually, need just a little bit bigger socket, but that's the biggest one I got. Right there it is. Okay, now getting back to the putting the crack case on, crack case cover. This is your gasket set. Here's your number on if you can read it. Uh, it. You can see it's got several different gaskets. The reason for this is to adjust your crankshaft in play. Some of these are thicker than the other ones, and some of them are thinner. I'm going to start with the red one. It's the thickest. That's what I usually start with. Then if it's if we got too much in play, I'll take it off and start building it up with the smaller ones. Okay, now these little guides here will come in real handy on this. You put your new gasket on here. Be careful with these things, they tear real easy. Okay, it pretty much holds its own, but you got to keep a careful eye on it. And also, you're going to want to put some STP on here and a little bit down in here. Okay, now you're ready to put the crankcase cover on. Just slide it up over the crankshaft here. Wiggle a little bit. Line up your guides here. You might want to take a rubber mallet here. And gently tap it on. And there it goes. And keep an eye on your gasket just to make sure nothing's moved. Okay. Once you get it on like this, you're ready to start putting your crankcase bolts in. We'll just put a couple in to start with, get them fairly snug, and we're going to check for the end play on the crankshaft, make sure we get the right gasket in. Okay, I got four bolts holding the crankcase cover on. I got them fairly snug, they're not torqued to spec yet. I'm just checking the, end, the crankshaft end play. Briggs says anywhere from two to twenty-three thousandths of end play. It's a pretty wide range, so uh, I can just guess at it, but you can hook up a dial indicator just to make sure you're getting the right amount. If you can move it just a little bit like that, it's good. If you can move it a whole lot, you need to put thinner gaskets on. If it don't move at all, uh, you need to add more. Okay, depending on what type of bolt these are, if they have a washer on there, they're supposed to be torqued to 140 pounds, 140 inch pounds. And if the washer's built in on the, the screw, you torque them at 200 inch pounds. Uh, make sure you get it. Okay, quit. Just work at an angle. Go from here to here to here to here. Just like this. Same way as torquing head bolts. We'll be doing that here in a little bit. Now we're going to check the valve clearance from the intake valve. It's supposed to be, be between five and seven thousandths. And I can't even get a five thousand in here. I lift the valve up. Put pressure on there and say it's way too much pressure. So what you do in this case is take your valve out and grind just a little tiny bit off of this. But don't take it too much. Now if your valve clearance was too much, what you'd do, you'd weld a little bit on here, then grind it back and adjust it till you get it right. Or you can replace the valve because sometimes that sometimes it's, these have been grinded before you don't know it, and you might just have to get a new valve. And the same thing, same thing for the exhaust valve, except the valve clearance on it's nine to eleven thousand. And also note when I was checking the intake valve, I had to I turned the engine over till the exhaust valve was open. That way you know 100% sure that valve would be closed. Okay, I thought. Of, the exhaust valve is at 5,000, this is at 13,000. I'm holding the valve down. The exhaust valve is supposed to be between 9 and 11,000. So, what I'm going to do in this case, I'm just going to reseat the valve, and that should drop it down a couple thousand, just get it a little tighter. Okay, now I got the valve clearance set, I'm going to start putting the valves in. I'm working on the exhaust valve first because you need as much room in here as you can. If you look, you'll see a groove in the valve here. That's where your two little keepers go. This is your keeper here. You got two of them. And the wide part goes towards the bottom of the block. They got to be on both sides. 
once you get on there, release this, and it should hold. And put a little dab of grease on there, it helps you hold it on there. Now the intake valve is a lot easier to do. I'll show you why here. But all you have to do on it is put it through here, find the bigger hole, then it holds itself. So it comes in on the side, and it locks in on the bottom. Sorry, I off camera right there. Now let's get this thing in here. Okay, there it is there. Okay, I got the valves done. The valve clearances are set right. Got the springs back in there. Now the next thing I'm going to do, I'm going to clean all the carbon build up out of the head. And I need to put the valve spring cover back on. Also note, I ended up cleaning the gasket off anyway. I thought it would be alright, but once I was working in the valve area there, it kept getting tore up, so I had to put a new one on. No big deal. Uh, you also might want to use a little bit of former gasket on that one. They tend to leak a lot. So, uh, okay, now we're ready to start putting the head back on. Get your head here. Get your gasket and set it on here to see if you're putting it on the right way. That's the correct way. And what I do, I'll put it on the, head, the actual head here. Let a couple bolts hold it. And line them up. An easy way to tell if you're putting the head on right. There's three bolts on this side and two on that side. So just get them on here. Set your head down. Now you got everything lined up alright. And you go ahead and start putting the rest of your head bolts in. And we'll torque them this back here. Okay, now we're ready to start torquing the head bolts. Always remember on bolts like this and the same as the crankcase, you want to start like here and go here, 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 and just go at an angle. You don't want to just start going around tightening because your pressure won't be put on even and you can work the head. So just pick a bolt to start on and this is 185 inch pounds. There it is. Down here and get this one. There that is. Come up here and get this one. And come down here and get this one and just keep going diagonally. Now I'm just putting the stator back on. Just put your four screws back in. Just using a nut driver. You want to get them fairly tight. You don't want that coming loose and getting tore up underneath the flywheel. And now we're going to go and set the flywheel on. Take the plastic pins off. You don't have to. Just line your keyway up. In this case, the keyway stayed in here. So I'm going to try to position it on here. And there it is. Now, this is different on certain models. On this type, you just have a pretty simple setup, really. But you want to put this back on first. You go ahead and get your two bolts in here. And this cup goes right back on here. On some engines, instead of a bolt going down in the crankshaft, you got thread sticking up and the nut comes down. Right. Just pay attention how you took everything apart. Now I'm just going to use the impact wrench on this to get it. You want to get these things tight. If you don't get them very tight, it'll shear the keyway as soon as it hits. Okay, let's get this tight. And I forgot to mention, be sure you put this plate of metal back in here. This helps hold the, the uh, fins on. Now on the older motors, you, you don't have plastic fins. They got metal fins. It's actually part of the flywheel. Uh, I actually like these in a way because if you break one, you can just take this off and bolt another one or you don't have to replace the entire flywheel. Get these pretty tight. Now I'm going to take care of that. Okay, now we're going to set the air gap on your armature or magneto. Okay. Get your filler gauge, put it underneath here. I got it set at ten thousands, which is the minimum setting Briggs recommends. You tighten it down. If you don't have a feeler gauge, just use a business card. It's about the same thickness. Okay, now after you get your coil on, you're gonna want to put this piece of metal on here in the front. Like I said before, don't forget to put this piece back on. If you don't, your air won't blow past these fins on your head and you'll burn the engine up. I hate to see an engine get burned up right after it's rebuilt. Now we're going to get ready to put the 
flywheel cover or flywheel shroud back on. 